Okay, so I tried to listen on my iPad to the phone conversation that Brian Parker sent me to listen to. And since I was listening to it for the third time, I thought, well, this is good stuff. So he says, yeah, go ahead and share it. So I thought, hmm, okay, I'll make a video. Somehow, I don't know what it was, if it was my speaker, I don't know. I'm going to try this again. So let's push play and see if it happens better. And so I would have gone over the registered agent jump thinking about setting up corporations because when I started hearing that word entrepreneur, it stuck with me and then I heard about all these people becoming entrepreneurs and starting their own businesses and making all this money and so I wanted to become years old and so I started doing research so I've been setting up corporations since I was 18 well as of the end of this coming month because corporations are a dime a dozen so the resignation of registered agent perfect angle uh, to go at and by the way to the secretary of state Responsibilities of the Secretary of State and you know they are the holder of all certificates, bonds, registrations, da da da. Businesses that are set up are all done through the Secretary of State. So I thought, wait a second, why not do the same thing they did? So what I did is I did a DBA on Florida for the Secretary of State. Site that said you cannot DBA your legal name. I said, okay, let's see what happens. And I went through it and down to the box that said, is this a trust, a partnership, incorporated, unincorporated? And I thought, here's the key it's unincorporated. I went and did it the next morning. I got a confirmation email from the Secretary of State that the DBA had been approved. So what did I do? I did the same thing they did. I created my own entity. And Sounds very similar to the name that they did that was given to me upon my nativity. Things like that, you know, and all these, you know, what more can you do? You know, a dozen different companies with different TPAs. Well, that goes right back to what the Constitution said about being secure in your papers and your persons. Oh. Yes. I'm, I'm fully aware we, that's what the setback, that's what they were defined under. That's why they even have a notice of registered agent in the DBA. Because we were perfecting that part of it as well. What you were doing and what you were implementing, and I'm saying that you are going to be doing this because you're going to push that to the next level. And what is that level? Well, you've already told them this is what I have done. And so I need to just go ahead and stipulate that this is what I've done. So, you know, it's six different uh, requests that I'm sure it's been floating around in people's minds. What are those securities in the minor account? Are there securities there that were established by the state, or it's just a reference to securities that may have been set up by, in, you know, when you were a minor? Uh, well, you got to go back to the Remember, these companies are all the same. Everybody's name relates to the other company. 
damage this, and they kind of uh, collateralized this. And all of the property of the people of the family property and all of that and everything they possess has been leveraged or mortgaged. So of course they would have to create security. Why? Because nobody's property may be seized and or taken without use for public use, without just compensation. When if the government takes and puts a mortgage on your property, that means they're using your property or leasing it for public use. It cannot be private. It has to be public. These are your compensation. I've been telling people you need to be asking. Now, we look at the vital records, vital statistics. Where is our right. compensation? We're not doing it. And because we're not doing it, that's not where the problem is created. What's the step? What the record for the statistics, what the laws that have just been talked about on video, you take them. Need all of the laws, but I would say you can contact the Library of Congress. I don't know if they'll let you get a copy of a page from the law because if they could let you get a certified copy of a particular page from the law, that would be perfect because then you can even get a copy of the exact section where it is quoted in the law. But I don't think they'll do that because they want money, so they'll make you order the whole thing. And it's hundreds of dollars in the actual. That you now have a record that exhibits and say, we have an agreement. I'm part of that contract. The bill is a contract. So I am part of that contract. I'm a party to the contract. Where is my compensation? You received my value. You have a mortgage on all of my property. Where is my compensation? And it has to be just. It cannot be just according to what a case law said. It has to be just according to my means. It has to equal what you receive. If it's just compensation, it means equal value. Right? Mm -hmm. And people are not receiving all this stuff about them taking somebody's home mm -hmm. uh, for constructing a bridge or something in eminent domain and giving them what they claim the market value is? No. That's not what you give me. You don't give me the market value. The market value could be down this year. I've had this property for 40 years. So you have to give me the value of this property for 40 years. And the nostalgia mm -hmm. and the uh, heritage. And this was in the family for this many years. And we have to give me the value of my compensation and give me what the market values my yeah. Nobody ever has ever brought those things up. Or they have chance to have ignored them. Go. Just 
gonna have to. Oh, by the way, did you all know that <laughs> discharge does not mean actual discharge? What do they mean by discharge? <clears throat> Interesting. You notice how it says that cancellation when you do a 1099C it means cancellation. Yeah. Right. Okay. 1099C discharge without debt cancellation not a consumer protection law violation. The court says discharge is not actual discharge, <laughs> which is amazing to me. They say because according to their policies, when they do a 1099C, well, they're not actually discharging the debt. Excuse me? What the? If they're discharging the debt, they're receiving a tax break when they do the 1099C. paperwork but how do you get out of the from a bank they say you owe them some money what else did they say the debt there are two sides of the ledger isn't there yours and theirs Yeah. Okay. People get a people get a little bit of information. 
shit and they're out there fucking running up and down the street with their underwear on their head. <laughs> 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 I've been reading the instructions. I could have everything all set up with going through a lot of hands. The guy he did a video talking about credit. Talked about monetization of tax credits. And I had to contact him. I called him on his cell phone and told him, thank you. I said, I have been yelling and screaming that you can monetize tax credits for years and people have not been getting it. So thank you for being the first one other than myself on YouTube for putting that information out there. He actually operates a business doing tax credits. The only problem is he only does it for individuals who have a million plus tax credits coming back to them. Like a big corporation. Dollars to do the paperwork. Hmm. My
share with me. Yeah, I, I did write the person back and said, the next time a judge yells at you, you say, excuse me, order in the order in the court, and you order in the court. How dare you raise your voice and scream in the manner that you just did? Like to perceive that, well, because remember they need sonographers, so the sonographer doesn't document and raise the voices when it comes to the judge. It will do it when it comes to you to make it look like you were the person who was out of line. Hmm. So you must document on the record their irateness. And then you tell them, I will hold you in contempt of court for operating in that manner. And then I will report you for bringing disrepute upon the court and upon the cloth and upon the craft. <laughs> because they'll have no other choice because that's what I did in what they said New Mexico with Francis for the current judge for doing that exact thing. Two years later, he was retired. A month later, he was reduced to juvenile court judge. Oh. There's always an observer there from the Supreme Court or from the Judicial Council. I am never in that, even though I don't have, and I don't bring any people who don't need that support, even though on my side there, there's always an observer there making sure they mind their P's and Q's. There is no yelling from the bench when I'm in court. And I always look for the They definitely don't belong there, but you can see that everybody in the courtroom, somebody, the police or whatever, they all know that person. They all know that that person is there. Mm. So, all right, let me let you gentlemen go. I have to finish dealing with. Okay. So the reason probably why my iPad was blowing up with. Christopher Hauser messages, boom, 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 the last time. Because <laughs> I'm using my iPad. I had to charge it again, you know, so we could hear this again. I'm hoping that it sounds better. Hey, while he was talking, I found like a three minute video here on the New Deal. Let's watch that. The New Deal in three minutes. Let's watch that and see what that. See how it is presented so that we could learn lickety -split. One simple but brilliant trick to cool your home in 90 seconds. I need, I need to hear that. Okay, here we go. Let's see. Let's see if this helps. This is cold. Meaning I have not actually done how the New Deal happened. Let's say the United States has just plunged into the worst depression in history and you are the president of those same United States. Come on, computer, don't do this to me. This is you do. Well, if your name is Herbert Hoover, then you would say something about laissez-faire individualism and do nothing. But if your name's Herbert Hoover, then you're also going to be remembered for being wrong. So let's skip ahead a few years and say now you're Franklin Roosevelt. You have a much better idea, which you call the <laughs> This program ran from 1933 to 35 and broke down into three goals, relief, recovery, and reform. It all started with what became known as the first 100 days during which Congress passed an unprecedented amount of legislation. First up was a banking holiday. For two days, every bank across the country was shut down and investigated. The well-behaved banks were then allowed to reopen while the rest were put under government control. The government then put some broad restrictions over the banks while also creating the FDIC, which would act as insurance for banking deposits. These two measures were designed to restore Americans' confidence in the banking system. Also aimed at restoring confidence were FDR's fireside chats, in which he spoke weekly to the American people through the radio in a reassuring voice and told them what was going on. More practical was the so-called alphabet soup of new government agencies that sprang up. And no, mm. 
her order, there was the Public Works Administration, which people to rebuild roads, the Civilian Conservation Corps, which paid younger people to plant trees, the Tennessee Valley Authority, which built hydroelectric dams in Tennessee, the Agricultural Adjustment Administration, which helped farmers by paying them to not farm, and the National Recovery Administration, which placed productive regulation on industry, just to name a few. But as it turned out, all that wasn't enough. Roosevelt and launched the second New Deal, which ran from 1935 to 1938. It was basically more of the same, adding the Works Progress Administration for artists and the Social Security Act for old of work people to the alphabet soup. So did work? In a word, kind of, FDR did greatly expand the role of the federal government people's lives and likely saved the economy getting much worse. But government spending is a complicated For all the good the New Deal made done, 1937, Buffering, I hate that. Come on. I closed out the other window. We still saw the Roosevelt recession when FDR tried to cut back on spending just a little. And even on his best day, FDR never got unemployment below 16%. That is until World War II. Hmm, interesting, huh? All right, so I'm going to close out this window. So we can see, listen to this guy. This is the one I think that Eon was talking about. I'm just taking a wild guess though. Let's see if my computer will let me hear it. Hi, I am Taylor Moffat of Halloween and this video is about monetized I hope that you tax can credits. See this. Yes, you can sell tax credits. Everybody says you can't, but that's wrong. Uh, why is that wrong? Um, well, they're, they're, they're technically correct. You can't sell the tax credits, but you can securitize the tax credits and sell the underlying securities. So it'd be kind of like if, uh, if someone says, Taylor, you can't sell this golf ball. And I go, okay. Um, and then I have a, uh, a cup. Here we go. And I say, hey, this golf ball is in this uh, this cup. I can sell the cup. The golf ball's in it. So cup for sale with whatever is in it. And and someone can go, okay, I'll buy that cup. And that is exactly how you sell tax credits. You have to securitize the tax credits. That means you're going to turn them into a security, uh, like a stock or a bond type thing. But we don't want to sell it as just a regular stock. You want to use something like a, a limited liability company a membership percentage or a limited partnership, master limited partnership, uh, limited liability limited partnership. Uh, there are all different types of vehicles that you can use to do that. But here's how you do it. Number one, we have to value your tax credits and determine for how long are you going to forward sell your tax credits. You may want to sell your tax credits just for one year in the future or two years in the future or five years in the future. Normally people will say, oh, if you're going to securitize your tax credits, you're just kissing them all goodbye for everything in the future, but that's not the case. You can use derivative instruments to do anything you want. Uh, that's my specialty and what I do is I help design stripped securities, derivative instruments, all types of things so that you can securitize and monetize your tax credits. Because that's a whole bunch of money that you've got sitting on your balance sheet. I know a guy that has $14 million worth of tax credits and they're just sitting there and he's not doing anything with them. And I thought, oh my gosh, there are probably a lot of clients that need this service. I'll make a video and I'll try to uh, reach a few people. And if you've got all of these millions of dollars worth of tax credits sitting there, sell those things. That's your money. Get it. So I can help you do that. What we do is we first design something. We decide how long you're going to sell. 
And then we create a value for that. We have to do uh, a formal business valuation with pro formas and everything so that investors can look at this and see what it is. And then we put together an offering. We securitize it. We want to use an instrument that's safe for you. You don't want to pay your dividends away to other people. You don't want to pay company con profits. You don't want to give liquidation rights to people. You don't want to give voting rights to people. You have to design all of that stuff. So you're just transferring an empty cup only with the tax credits in it and none of the other good stuff that you want to keep, like voting control of your company. Interesting. So we create a valuation, we create the instrument, we create everything, and then we create a registration statement. And the registration statement is all of this information that's been put together, the risks and everything involved. And then uh, I will draft all of that stuff. Your attorney signs off on it, blesses it, and then files it with the SEC. This is really easy to do. Uh, people make a big deal out of it. It's not that tough. It just takes a lot of hours and someone like me can do a lot of the work and save you money instead of going to an expensive SEC law firm and paying them 500 bucks an hour. You can have someone like me who's a faster worker, more efficient. I do the same thing over and over and over and I can do it much more efficiently and save you a ton of money. And then you have your attorney look it over and sign off on it. They'll make obligatory changes so that they justify their fees to you. And then, uh, then they file it with the SEC. And as soon as they do, you can advertise your tax credits for sale. And here's how you do that. Is it tough? People are always intimidated. Taylor, will you sell them for me? No, I don't sell securities. I don't sell tax credits. I don't do any of that stuff. Um, I used to work in a firm that did when I was securities licensed. And it's very easy. You don't need to pay someone else. You don't need to hire an investment bank to sell your tax credits for you. You can do it yourself and save a bunch of money. And I'll show you how. The, here's how you sell it. You just advertise it and say tax credits for sale, 50% discount on your taxes. There are a ton of people out there that owe a lot of money in taxes and want a discount. I mean, this is not rocket science. There are a lot of people that want a 50% discount on their taxes. It's kind of like if you go to a baseball game and there's a guy out there in the front, you're about to pay 50 bucks for a ticket. And there's a guy standing there that says, hey, they're 50 bucks, I'll give you mine for 20. And uh, you go, okay, you give the guy 20 bucks, you go in. Uh, same kind of thing, same kind of thing here with the tax credits. Rather than give the IRS $100,000, Someone's going to say, well, I'll just give you $50,000 and buy your tax credits. And then they basically just bought a 50% discount on their taxes. I mean, you can't lose with it. It's a fantastic deal for whoever buys your tax credits. Really easy to do. You can just put an ad on the internet. If, you, if you're really that intimidated by selling it, I can recommend investment bankers for you that'll sell it for a fee. Although I don't think you need to do that. I, I don't think you need to pay them to do that. I think you can do it yourself. Uh, but at any rate, again, just for the record, I do not sell securities. I do not do legal advice. I do not do tax advice. I will do the financial econometrics and valuation. I will write your business plan. I will structure the deal. I will give you business advisory services. Your attorney is not trained in business. I've got an MBA with a specialty in finance. I did a six-year apprenticeship at a financial firm, worked my way up to be the number two guy in the firm. And in addition to that, I've got almost all of a PhD in finance. I just have to finish my dissertation and I've been too lazy. But at any rate, I do have the qualifications to give financial advisory services regarding business advice. So I can write these materials for you. I can put it together for you on a payment plan. So you don't even have to pay for everything up front. You can just kind of pay as you go and away you go. I would say if you if you don't have at least a million dollars worth of tax credits for sale, just keep them and use them yourself. If you've got $100,000 worth of tax credits and you wanna sell those, uh, it might really not be worth it. Um, half a million, uh, maybe it's worth it. If you've got $10 million worth of tax credits for sale, this is definitely worth it. And you need to call me right away because you're going to get a bunch of money that would have just sit there and done nothing. I mean, you have money 
sitting on your balance sheet. That is cash and you need to take it because it's mm-hmm. yours. Why let it just sit there and go to waste? If you had $100,000 sitting anywhere around your house, you wouldn't just let that blow out the door when somebody opens it. You would grab it and take care of it. So if you've got more than a million dollars worth of tax credits out there, you need to take that. But at any rate, I'm glad to help you with that sort of thing. That's my specialty. My website is kelso.us, K-E-L-S-O dot U-S. And my name is Taylor Moffat of Holly Dean. If, if you just came in and you're watching this video uh, and nobody referred you over to the website, we usually work with professional referrals, you can call my cell phone directly because it's pretty hard to get through the website unless somebody referred you. So my cell phone is 515 851 5002. That's 515 851 5002. Thanks and God bless. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I already called and there's no way to leave a message because his answering machine is full. Anyways, this is Haya Shalom. I will recommend you. <laughs> I think that this is the guy that Eon was talking about to Brian Parker. I don't know. I don't even know how you get tax credits. I'm assuming that we all have them, but I have no idea. Anyways, I hope that this turned out better and that uh, you'll be able to hear it clearer. I won't know until after I produce this video. Have a great day, you guys.